This video is sponsored by Paperlike. The last few weeks, I have been working solely from the iPad again, thanks to Final Cut coming to the iPad. I usually come into my office around 6 a.m. with a fresh cup of Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar with cream soda. I can't start my day without it. The first thing I do with my iPad is I look at my widgets to see a summary of my day. After that, I open up good notes and journal about the day. I have a template that I've been using for years now that really helps me think through my day. I make a plan for how I'm going to tackle all of the day's tasks. This particular morning, I have a video being launched. I have a system set up using Zapier and Push Cuts that watches my channel and whenever there is a new video, it sends me a notification. When I tap on this, it runs a shortcut that pulls the video's link, title, and even description. It formats it into a blog post and then sends it over to my website. After journaling, I transition over to my main desk and plug my iPad into my monitor. Now this is where I have to make the toughest decision of the day. Which keyboard do I use? Today, I'm gonna use the Mode 80, my favorite keyboard. Lately, I've been using the MagFloat Pro Stand in portrait mode to hold my iPad. When placing this on my monitor stand, I can get it to reach the exact height of my height adjustable studio display. When working with my iPad on an external display, it is rare that I place an app on the iPad screen. I usually use the widgets on the home screen as a dashboard summary of my day. Personally, I prefer to work from just a single monitor. It helps me focus. When working, I use a shortcut called Mode Cut. This puts my iPad in a specific state depending on the kind of work I'm doing. So for admin tasks, this turns on my work focus mode and starts time tracking for administration stuff. I use time tracking as a way to make sure I stay on task. See, having ADHD and no one to report to can be, well, an interesting combination. This helps with that. When sitting at my main desk, I usually start off by taking a crack at my email. I get a lot of this and staying on top of it can be a challenge. Luckily, I've been really good this week at slowly catching up on it. After I tackle my email, I take a look at my task manager and calendar. This is just to make sure I have a clear understanding of everything that is happening that day. For creating tasks throughout the day, I have a shortcut in my doc called Task Cut. This uses the Things Quick action to jump into the app and start filling out tasks. But if I have a Safari page open, it will attach a link to that task and format it into Markdown. While working at my desk, I have the Sidekick notepad sitting underneath my keyboard. I use this as a scratch pad for jotting ideas down, making notes, and tracking the videos I need to make in a given week. This is an excellent product and it works really well as a keyboard wrist rest as well. I work from home and with my ADHD, that can cause some issues. I have plenty of things around here to distract me, especially a certain new Zelda game. Lately, when I've been needing to focus, I'll head over to Starbucks or a bagel shop. One of my favorite things about working on the iPad over the Mac is the fact the iPad has cellular. I don't ever have to worry about joining a coffee shop's Wi-Fi or even if their Wi-Fi is working, which seems to be about a 50-50 thing. I just sit down and get straight to work. The text editor I have been using is Obsidian. It's an incredibly powerful text editor with support for community plugins. When working outside of the office, there are elements I can't control, mostly noise. This is where the second generation AirPods Pro come into play. The improved noise canceling is so good. In fact, I never take my AirPods Max out of the house anymore. When doing deep focus work, I use the app Dark Noise to play some background sounds. For me, music can get distracting and just having rain sounds playing is really calming. This video is sponsored by Paperlike. Paperlike is one of my favorite iPad accessories. It's a matte screen protector that gives you a textured feeling for when you're using the Apple Pencil. This way you don't get that plastic on glass feeling. 
it's much more of a pencil and paper feeling. The new version of the Paper Lake focuses on proving the clarity of the display while having the screen protector on, and it does a great job at that. Because it's a matte screen protector, you get the added benefit of it cutting down on light reflection. When it isn't blistering hot, I love working outside, but iPad screens aren't really bright enough to work in direct sunlight. The Paper Lake helps cut down on that reflection. Paper Lake also has a cleaning solution that I absolutely love. I use this every day and it keeps the fingerprint smudges off and my device looking new. Before, I used to have to scrub this thing with a microfiber cloth, and that was a real pain. Now, I just spray and wipe. Paperlike recently announced a new magnetic folio case as well. Paperlike sells a ton of accessories you can use for your iPad. Go check them out by using the link in the description below. My thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Once I got my scripts completed, I returned home. Usually during lunch, I will go through my RSS and bookmarking app. This gives me a bit of a mental break and I can see what other people are up to. If I find something interesting, but I can't read it all the way through at that moment, I will add it to any box to read later. But if something sparks an idea, I use my capture cut shortcut. This will let me write a note about whatever and will then get the link to whatever is currently on screen, format it in a markdown, and then add it to a note in Obsidian. I also like to take this time to go through the app store. I'm always looking for new apps to cover on the channel. I built a shortcut called apps to check out, and this will add any app to any box with the proper tag information. Final Cut for the iPad is the catalyst for me being able to work solely from the iPad like this again. I wasn't happy with any of the other video editing options on the iPad. They were either too buggy or just desktop ports that didn't feel like an iPad app. While Final Cut for the iPad is very much a version 1.0, I am able to do everything I need for my video. Today, I am finishing up an edit for a video. I can quickly go through and cut up everything that I need to, add B-roll, mix in some music, and color grade. Another app that I use while working is Ouchie. This is an app I use to block other apps. I tie this in with specific parts of my mode cut shortcut, like writing or editing. This way, if I try to distract myself with other apps while I'm working, I can't. Once I finish my edit, I can upload straight to YouTube thanks to Desktop Class Safari coming to iPad. When I used to edit videos on the iPad back in the day, I had to send them to my server computer and then upload them from there. Or if I use the YouTube app, I was limited to 1080p. Lightroom is my photo editing app of choice. I edit all of my thumbnails, landscape photos, and even family stuff here. It's not the most friendly iPad app. In fact, there are better apps out there for editing photos on the iPad, but it gives me the results I want. And at the end of the day, that's the most important piece to me. The way I pay for Lightroom also includes Photoshop for the iPad. My Photoshop needs are incredibly small, so it works well for me. But even years after its launch, it still feels very limited compared to the desktop version. But the reason I use Lightroom and Photoshop is because they are closely integrated and I can send images back and forth between the two easily. I usually like to end my day by playing with some new app or building a shortcut. I call this research time and it's incredibly important to the way I approach making videos. Today, I'm building an advanced task management shortcut for things. I basically want to replicate the quick capture feature of things, but without having to go into the app. This will probably take a few days to build properly. Well, that's a typical day working from the iPad for me. My thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.